Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're diving into a topic very close to my heart, which is children's books. <laughs> the angle is like something new I want to try, so if it's terrible, please dismiss that and let's talk about children's books. And more specifically, reading children's books as an adult. And just to be clear, what I mean is like ages 9 and up. This journey has been filled with surprises. So, grab your favorite drink. I have coffee with you. Get comfortable and let's get started. Okay, first up, let's start with this book, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This specific book was rewritten for ages 9 plus. Let me be clear here, my critique of this book is for the adaptation of the children's book and not for the original piece by Bronte. I found this adaptation that is marketed towards children very problematic. It's quite traumatizing and unbelievable, to be honest. The amount of abuse depicted in this book and the fact that it even includes, you know, a mention of a cousin proposing to another cousin, which is disgusting. I think that's horrendous um, and I can't believe it's marketed towards nine-year-old. I don't think this is suitable for younger audiences, so let's just leave Jane Eyre as a classic for older readers who can truly appreciate the depths and complexities of the story. Not for kids. Sorry. Not sorry. Next up we have a little book. It's a great book this time. Um, it's called Ikogenia Anderson, which is like um, the fam family Anderson. The Anderson family. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> um, the Anderson family by Evla Biatirelli. This was published back in May of this year, like three months ago, and it was a delightful surprise. It's a bit creepy and wonderfully written. Let me show you just a couple of illustrations, which I love. Um, this one here is one of my favorites. Vampires in this story are presented as people who are different from us and humanity has been fighting them out of ignorance and fear. As a huge fan of vampires, I found this message um, very beautiful and incredibly powerful. It's a nice reminder that it's okay to be different and that we can only move forward with understanding and acceptance. I always wanted to write a vampire story, although mine is going to be kind of bloody. <laughs> the Anderson family is also marketed towards ages of uh, 9 and above, and I think this is a wonderful addition to children's literature. Okay, so now let's talk about Harry Potter and how dark this has become for me. Um, the Harry Potter series used to be my comfort read. It is especially recommended here in Greece, at least I don't know in other countries, for ages 12. And as I was finishing my PhD, um, I started reading the series again to soothe my anxiety. And to my surprise, uh, reading the first two books was extremely triggering. <laughs> I didn't even manage to finish the second book, you see. So I stopped. And I find it funny how something that I loved as a child, I started reading the Harry Potter series when I was 10, um, and I loved it growing up. And now rereading this story brings back memories of my childhood, which is like obvious, but I mean, what I mean is um, it brings back memories of my childhood struggle. This book once helped me escape reality, and now reading them again only brought back memories of the reality I was avoiding. So, yeah, reading Harry Potter again as an adult just ruined it for me. 
On a brighter note, um, let's move on to Ransom Reeves. Um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I have an entire video on this book. You can go watch it if you're interested. Um, this is a lovely book. This is wonderfully creepy. Like, look at this images here. Like, this, this is amazing. Yes, this is a very creepy book. It's uh, recommended for ages 12 plus. I read it a while back and I absolutely loved it. It's creepy, fascinating, and in my opinion, age appropriate, unlike Jane Eyre. And I am so thrilled that horror books for children are becoming widely um, available. Okay, now let's dive into Neil Gaiman's world. Over the past year, I read four books by Neil Gaiman. Um, Coraline, Fortunately, The Milk, and The Graveyard Book in physical copies. And I also listened to the audiobook of, I think it's called The Ocean at the End of the Lane. The End of the Lane, yes. So Neil Gaiman is simply amazing. And I also recently watched the Sandman series on Netflix. I haven't read the graphic novels though. His work is so, so unique and imaginative. It's mind-blowing. It really brought out the child in me. When I was growing up, my imagination wasn't very much appreciated by the adults in my life, and I felt like I had to suppress it growing up. And reading Gaiman's work kind of gave me hope that imagination isn't exclusive to children. It reminded me that anyone at any age can create wild, crazy stories. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think the same goes for um, a series of unfortunate events, which uh, I started watching on Netflix before I realized it was a book series. I had no idea. Uh, I never read this series and now I want to read it. I just fell in love with it. and. Uh, and then there are the wonderful stories by Roald Dahl, which I read when I was a kid, like Matilda, Charlie, and the Chocolate Factory, and the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. These stories are so outrageous. I mean, they're so imaginative and adventurous. And they appeal both to the child, sorry, they appeal both to the child and the adult. Mm. So all these books, except for Jane Eyre, which was, I think, inappropriate for children, and Harry Potter, with uh, whom I have uh, history, all of the rest, <laughs> the rest of them are mind-blowing and have kind of reignited my love for storytelling. Um, I work in a, a bookstore, it's not really a bookstore, but it's in the, the bookstore section of the store. Um, and I sell children's books. So when children come up to me and they ask me for recommendations and I recommend these books that I've read before or that I'm currently reading as an adult um, and hear them ask, well, what happens next? Tell me what happens next. And it's kind of, it's, it's a beautiful reminder, you know, of the enthusiasm and the wonder that comes with childhood and it's also a wonderful reminder that it doesn't have to stop in childhood. We can continue to be enthusiastic and cultivate wonder for the world. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense. So basically incorporating children's books into my TBR as an adult has been a wonderful decision. I feel that sometimes I just need the insane plots and characters that come with these insane stories. I think by reading these books, I learned that imagination can be cultivated. It doesn't run dry. And I realize now that the adults that kept telling me as a kid that my imagination is something bad, uh, they're wrong. I'm truly very grateful and relieved <laughs> to have rediscovered children's stories and the joy they bring. Well, 
that's it for today. Thank you for joining me in my journey of rediscovering children's books. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more bookish content. And let me know if you read children's books as an adult, or if you're planning to read some. Until next time, happy reading! Bye-bye! And I feel like sometimes... You just, you know?